this is the first year that I've started saying like no to things too, which is weird. I'm a, very much a yes person and a people pleaser. Um, I like to think it's a nice Canadian in me, but um, no, this year I am doing a lot more of like trying to spend less time stressing about stuff and just trusting my first instinct. We'll see well, how that goes. That, I, I'm glad that you still have some yeses in you because it'd be kind of weird <laughs> if it was like, it's like we want Allie as a conversation because we didn't have a conversation with her for a while. But like she's in the no stage of her life. I would just be like, okay, let me know when she's back into the yes stage. <laughs> really start off this episode, Allie. Uh, welcome back to the podcast. Uh, the last you. time we did this, it was by audio. Um, and I, I know we talked about the collage wall, but I get to kind of see the collage wall, I guess. In a sense. Yeah, so that, that's kind of cool. But the thing I want to bring up before we dive into like all different aspects of a conversation is I think um, like in a, a whole wholesome moment or a wholesome moment was, again, because you get it through audio. So it, it's in the moment. But I remember I, I was talking to you and the next minute you're like, I really like your voice. You sound like you're like in a radio or something. And I was just like. No, no one says that to me. And yet I have the radio broadcast degree. So kind of like to me, it was like, oh, okay, I did choose the right career path. Because if someone was just like, man, you sound like a puppeteer. I'd be like, <laughs> I miss my colleague. <laughs> no, you do. You have like such a unique voice too, where like you hear it and you're like, oh, I know exactly who that is, you know? And yeah. I think like, especially coming from the world of being in the artist land, that's so important yeah. to have a voice that people are like, oh. Now, this is who it is, and I like this person, and I want to hear more of this person. That could be troubling if you pick up on my voice, because there'll be one time where I'll phone and be like, hold on, I'm going to prank call Allie. She's not going to know. And then it's like, hold on. He enunciated, and the inflation and the accent, it'd be like, is this Tobin? And I'd be like, uh, yeah, whatever. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I want to ask you to like really kind of dive into things. Like, your song, Love Song, is out. Mm -hmm. uh it's been out i bought by the time this gets posted it's probably going to be a few weeks but i yeah. do want to ask you like there's an interesting story behind that now people can obviously check it out on instagram but for those who are like no we're here get us to tell us why explain that a yeah. little bit to me so long story short i was playing a show in nashville it's been just about over a year i think um and middle of my set like all the time i do like a couple specific covers that are, you know, the reason I am where I am. So I'll do like some in sync in there and I'll do um, a little bit of like Brad Paisley. Brad Paisley is like one of the people who got me into country music, but my favorite love song of them all is um, this one that I feel like most of us know when you say nothing at all. And this one night in specific, it was, it was a packed crowd. Like there was not an empty seat. And I'm mid first chorus into the song. And this woman approaches the stage and she's standing there for a second. And I'm like, I don't know what's happening. And she's like, I need you to stop playing the song. And I was like, okay, like, I, yeah. guess, I guess we're going to do that. I was shocked. Everyone in the room was shocked. And it's that moment when you're like, what is going on here? Um, Why sure is your enough, thing? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and found out that she was recently divorced and that was her wedding song. And that moment, just like, obviously I think no matter what would happen, that would stick with you the rest of the night. But there was a part of me that was like, wait, there's a song on this, which really took over me, which like, good luck getting through the rest of a set thinking that way. Cause my brain's already yeah. like starting to formulate, like writing lyrics and melodies and all of that. And um, I called up my friend Josh and I was like, we need to write this song together. Um, and I'm so glad we did because we kind of told this story of this woman, um, how, how we kind of saw things kind of playing out in a relationship. And then of course, leading up to the song, I was like, I am not the biggest fan of TikTok, but I'm going to give this a go where we've got two weeks until the song comes out. I'm just going to post every single day and like let people in and some of like the behind the scenes of how the song came to be and then posted that. And I think we're at like over 2 million views now on it, which is insane. And like all of these people who came out of the woodworks that were like, Hey, that was also my wedding song. Also divorced. I'm joining the club, like all of this. Yeah. And it's just, it's crazy to see how something so real 
does obviously relate to people like as a songwriter you're always like oh like maybe i'll write a song about drinking or this people will relate and sure enough no it was just like write about real life people will relate yeah. wild how that works i think it's, it's like so i have like a number of questions go off that uh but like they're yeah. more or less not even written on a sheet it's just off the top here but like one how is it that she's able to walk up to you and just be like stop the song like, we're security where does security be like, excuse me, she's the entertainment? Like, just deal with it on your own time. <laughs> Again, it was so innocent. Like, that's the thing. Yeah. Like, there was nothing, like, weird about it other than the fact of, like, trying to communicate with me, like, hey, I need you to stop the song. And me being like, wait, what is, what's going on right now? I don't, is this actually going on? Um, a moment I'm very thankful for, though. Yeah, yeah. I think it's just like i guess it's like the balls to do that for someone to come up like while you're like trying to perform like because can you imagine like i know it's different realms but i can imagine just being like going to like an ed sheeran concert or like a black or, or a backstreet boys concert or whatever and you tell them what songs to play like imagine if you go to the ed sheeran and be like okay i know that you wrote this song but like bieber performs it about like loving yourself but like I don't love myself right now. So can you like, you're, 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 you're hurting my mood. And he'd just be like, okay, everyone, I know we're in Wembley, but this guy over here doesn't want me to sing this. So I'm going to stop. Like, no, I'd be the one getting booed out. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, totally. Yeah. And it's funny because like even seeing all the comments of people being like, well, I don't know if I would have done that, but for the amount of people who did that, there were the same amount of people who were like, Oh, absolutely. Would have done the same yeah. thing. And I was yeah. like, Oh wow. What a great reminder that like, Sometimes we have to just like put ourselves in other people's shoes, you know? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Looking back, would I have done it the same way? I don't know. Probably. Probably. Yeah. If it were a bigger room, I'm sure there would have been some more upset people and we might have started the song over again. But who knows? Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. I, I want to ask you though, in terms of just um that song in particular, like, do you ever wonder if she'll if she listens to it out there and then she comments and be like, all right. I know I rushed you on stage. Now you're writing a song about me. No, <laughs> no. Well, don't. it's kind of funny because like, again, I posted the story knowing that no, no one was really going to see it. You know, like yeah. I didn't think about the fact that, I mean, I did think about it. There, there's two sides of this. I was like, obviously it would be cool if we could find this woman. It would be yeah. really cool for circle. Um, did not expect it to blow up the way it blew up because like I, my videos before that, like the five posted before that had less than 300 views. And I was like, cool. My 300 followers are going to see this. They might think it's cool. Um, yeah. so yeah, pretty insane. And I can confirm it did make it to who needed to hear it. So that's kind of, okay. that's kind of cool. I think it's interesting. Like the world of kind of TikTok. like I'm not on TikTok, uh, but I think it's interesting how like that works is all it takes is like a trend or something to be related or, or relatable. But like, mm -hmm. I, I mean, to kind of give you, I, I don't know, like this almost feels like a how I met your mother, like Neil Patrick Harris moment. Cause it's not supposed to come off like a backhanded compliment, but it might, but like <laughs> the song 24, when I seen that come out, I was like, and the whole story behind that of like how it was written for your sister and like you're in the car with her and she's listening and she's kind of like, uh, is this about me? And I was like, oh, yeah. I'm enticed. Like, does she tell her it's about her? Like, whatever. But, like, to me, that kind of speaks volume because, yeah, I'm 30. But I remember being at that crossroads. And, like, no, I'm not getting married. But yeah, it's to that standpoint of, like, okay, I'm almost at 25. What's going on here? And, like, I feel like sometimes you look at your algorithm or, like, the feedback on that. You're like, man, like, I, I really wish that would have hit harder. Right? But then you're kind of like, all right, if it hit who it hit, great. But that's how I feel like. And uh, to me, that's supposed to be a compliment because you hit Thank me you. with it. Right. Because I'm just like, man, I like this one. And this one has a story. Not that, the, not that love story doesn't, but I'm just like totally. surprised that like, Oh, like more people are like, well, I've been divorced and this is my story. And yeah. I'm like, yeah. But what about the 24 year old? This is trying to find out a crossroads. <laughs> well, you know what? I think the biggest thing behind that was, okay. So 24 was written for my sister. Like all of that was as yeah. real as you could get. But I remember like hearing the demo back and I was like, wait, Lauren's coming to town in a couple weeks. If we can get this demo done, we're going to do a car video and I'm going to sit in the car yeah. and I'm going to show it to her for the first time and whatever, whatever. I loaded her up with margaritas before we listened to it in the car. <laughs> Not that that helps the crying at all, but I'm sure a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
like it, it was explains why she it explains why she was like oh is this about me no, no. <laughs> that is my sister in general lauren is yeah. like always like, oh is this about me yeah. i love her for it um but like i think part of that like 24 and like my thoughts of like how i'm gonna market it was very thought out as like oh if this is a good video it will help market the song versus like the approach for love songs was not like this is how it's gonna hit it big it was just like I'm cool with whatever. And I honestly am starting to think that a lot of what goes viral and what does not has a lot to do with what is just like truly in the moment versus maybe a little thought and planned out in your head a little bit before, you know, actually going through with it. Yeah. Like, I think it's interesting because of course we've had like other artists on and you see like some songs that I really do enjoy by them. And then you're like, okay, Mm -hmm. why didn't that do as popular as well? Like, I know we had Parker Gray on. Uh, I know we've had like Olivia Rose. Like these are people that I, I went through your thing just to double check, but like there are people that liked your video as well. And Shantaea yeah. and like yeah. some of the songs that you listen to, you're like, okay, I don't necessarily get it, but that's mm-hmm. popular. And then there's sort of like, again, the backhanded compliment side of it where it's just like a, a song that I'm like, I have this downloaded. I like it, but yeah. it's not trending. And I'm just like, why? Like, I don't, don't understand it. Like, it's so I think weird. Par- yeah, like Parker had one out where it was like, I think she did a video on it where it's like, imagine if Avril Lavigne's song Complicated was like country. Yes. And I was like, yes, that sounds interesting. Now, I don't know how well it did, but in my mind and listening to it, I was like, yeah, that sounds cool. But then there could be a total audience that's like, don't get it, skipping over it. And then another song, I'm like, okay, I don't get that one. But then it's like, right. it's like big hit on Canadian radio. And I'm just like, I, I don't get it. I don't understand. Well, it's so frustrating because especially again, watching people around me where I'm like, maybe no label, no team, even stuff that does have label and team where I'm like, this is good. Why is this yeah. not doing what it should be doing in my head? And yeah. that's, I think what I stopped doing with my music, especially this year was like the, I think people will like this. Like 2023 Allie is like, I'm doing this because I think it's cool and we're just going to do it and put it out there and we'll find my people if it is meant to be. <laughs> yeah. That's a, that's a, a better approach than like, it, cause I find that's funny because a lot of people that we've had on have had that. And I don't know if it's just a crossroad of social media in a sense, because um, like, I know we had Madison Olds on for our first episode this t- year and she was kind of like similar path where she said she had released songs in 2022 and she's like, I was trying to be kind of like a punk rocker girl. Uh, I think she mentioned like Taylor had come out with stuff, pa- uh, right. Paramore. And she's like, I felt like that was my realm or that's my alley. And uh, it was like, okay. And then she's like, yeah, 2023 Madison is just going to, she wants to release a pop song. She's going to do a pop song. I was just like, yeah. It's like, I, I know that it's more or less a social world where people are like, I, they want authentic, but then they get mad that it is authentic. But then they get mad that oh. it's not real. And I'm just they're like, I don't know. It's just do do what you want and see if people will yeah. track it. Because I see marketing videos and we've had the band on actually and they made fun of it where it's like, I showed my mom my latest song. And then I'm like, Yeah. But she's humming the song. Like, how is how does she know the song right. already? And they're like, they're like, we were trying a marketing thing, but they're like, we posted anyway because we thought it was humorous. And I'm like, and that's why people like you, because you knew yeah. it was a bad move. You still posted it. And people are like, all right, they get it. Like, they, it, it blew up, but they're like, we get it. They didn't try to sugarcoat it. And I think that's what people want is like, if it doesn't go well, just post it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, people want highs and lows. But uh, <laughs> exactly. I, I want to I ask, like, because um, what, are, what are some things that you have my, in mind for 2023? Because I know you just, you're talking about releasing, like, well, the song's already released now. But, yeah. like, do you have any tours in mind? Do you have like uh, like kind of a set path? Because yes, one song's released, but is there more on the way? Is there an album? Yeah, there, there's definitely more on the way. I think, again, backing on this whole like trying to not overthink things, this is the year of like continuously putting out music and not just like giving one song and being like, okay, yeah. maybe there's more. Like going yeah. into this year, I've already got, We've got the next one ready to roll and I'm in the studio next week doing three more and um, kind of have a release set for like everything this year, which I've never started the year this way ever, I don't think. So I feel very ahead of it on those 
uh, terms, but also like really want to get back to playing live. And I know that I made a whole album to go and play it live. And then the world kind of shut down during all of that. So I kind of got chipped a little bit, I feel like on the live side, but the part of making an album is going to play it live. So um, all this new music, I'm excited to get on the road because technically there will be two albums worth of stuff now that people yeah. really haven't heard live before. And I just like want to see humans again. That would be really nice too. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think I forget that aspect of things too. Cause I know there are acts that have just released stuff during COVID or prior to COVID. And like, there's a part of you, like, I guess kind of selfishly, like when you see it released on iTunes, you're like, awesome, done, downloaded. And then you're like, okay, got it forever. But then it's like, you forget the aspect of seeing it perform live, the different atmosphere of that. Um, Cause I can imagine now this, like, this is my, the way my brain works, but imagine like downloading a 2002 Backstreet Boys CD or like, you know, like black and blue. And you're like, love these songs. Can't wait for them to perform it. And then not mm. seeing them perform any of it for like another two years. I'm still young, but it's still probably like, uh, have they ever performed this song? And they'd be like, no, because this thing happened yeah. and we had to shut it down. I'd be like, oh, so do we get to see them perform it? It's like, yeah, eventually. I'd be like, yeah, but when is eventually? Like, when, when is it? <laughs> well, and soon uh, enough, well, it still makes sense for it to be in the set list too, because I don't want to outwrite myself out of the last album yeah. yet. Like, I still want to play those songs. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I need yeah. to be on the album like next week. <laughs> yeah. What, like, off the songs that you have, like, what ones are you kind of interested to see how an audience reacts to it? Because I, I can assure you, I know it's a different world, but like, sometimes when I'll do podcast episodes and like go back to edit, there's a part of me yeah. that after the interview is done or the conversation, like, all right, I don't know how that turned out. And then I'll listen to it and I'm like, you know what? Not as bad as I thought, or even better than what I expected. And you get clips and you're like, wow, those are cool. And then you're kind of waiting to see what other people like find interesting. Like mm -hmm. I might find someone's story about how they overcame alcohol interesting. And then you go on social media and then there's people like, I actually really liked how they told the story about how they had a twin sister and they used to beat the crap out of each other. I'm just like, yeah. like what? You, you don't have a twin sister? Like what? And then I'm like, I guess that's a little bit more up the alley. But what, what's, uh, what are you excited for in terms of songs that you want to see people react to? I mean, I definitely think um, off the last album feels like this. The title track of the album is one I'm most excited for, mainly because that was the one that stepped most, most outside of the country vein. Um, okay. But did that specifically because I feel like it's going to be a really fun song for live, especially with a full band. I've done that one stripped down, but not with the full band yet. So I know that's going to be a really fun one. Um, guys like you, I think it's going to go over really well. I'm really excited for boys and girls to have a moment. Um, yeah. just because that was the song on the album that the fans voted in. That was one that was like kind of in my list of like, this is a good song. I don't know if people are going to love it though. And then all of a sudden the fans made it the last song on the album. So that'll be a fun one to play. Um, and there's a song that's coming out hopefully this summer, but it's called um, Stop Making Trucks. And okay. that's one that I'm really excited about too. Um, just to give you a little hint at as what to come. But uh, yeah, yeah. No, there's, there's a lot. I'm really just excited to get out there and just like play everything. I think everyone will just be shocked by the fact I'm like back and doing the thing again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think it's interesting because when you're talking about like just say country music and like, you know, everyone has they're artists that they looked up to. You kind of mentioned about Brad Paisley. It's mm -hmm. interesting to me because like you see younger artists now that will still talk about like uh, Taylor Swift being an idol. And like, I get it. Okay. Cause now it's kind of like a pop, a more of a pop country mix. But there was a part of me that when I was like younger and listening to music, like we grew up on like Garth grew up on like mm -hmm. Tim McGraw, Faith Hill. But like, what do you think in terms of like, for this album or when you're going forward, like, do you see yourself kind of, cause I, I know a lot of people want to do the pop country. Some people are like, Oh, I'm going to bring back modern, like my own modern country. But like, yeah. what kind of lane do you see yourself going in? Or are you kind of like, there is no lane. I'm just driving all over the place. <laughs> um, in my brain, I'm saying I'm in no lane. I'm driving all over the place. I was really thankful. This is the first album 
since my very first album, actually, um, that only has one producer. Um, okay. And it's kind of funny when I was looking for someone, I went through every single week for probably the past year, maybe more. I would load up Spotify every single Friday and I would go to like New Music Friday Country or whatever it is. And I would just like scroll through the credits and I was like, okay, what stuff do I like the sound of what stuff sounds like me, like all of that. And there was only one name that came up every single time I did this. And Eric Arges is my favorite human being ever. And I'm really lucky to have him as part of the project because he's helping me hone in on like, okay, these are the co cohesive sounds. This makes this is going to make sense to the fans when we listen to it. When we like okay. do a little bit of different production through this, these are going to be the ones that make sense. So um, I'm really thankful that we've been on the same page for a lot of the stuff too. But Eric's kind of my soundboard to make sure it sounds like Allie. And I think we've um, gone from like the last album, which was um, like pretty big production, I'd say, in terms of country pop. Um we're like scaling it back a little bit um, here and there, still kind of sitting in that country pop world, but giving some of that like space back into the song, which can also give it a little more of like, I don't want to say classic country because it's definitely still going to be country pop, but giving it more of that like down home vibe that I feel like maybe we've missed because everything's been like very big and busy over the last couple yeah. albums. Do you find that it helps to have just say like less voices in the room or like less people? Like, cause I, I know some people want, like for me, I don't know how I'd manage if I had like seven people pulling me in different directions or even at four and three, like, you know, whatever the divide is. But like, I find with myself, it's pretty much me, another guy that kind of helps me. And then maybe like, I'll ask for opinions from like, but they're not like podcast people. Cause I know I, I there's a smart pat porn in me that says, why don't you ask podcasters about your podcast or whatever? I'm just like, yeah. because they probably have their own stuff to do. And it's probably not like right. up their alley where it's like, I want to reach out to who I want to listen. So if I go to my friend, I'm like, who would you like to see on this episode? Or like, what kind of people do you find interesting today? And if they give me right. names, I'm like, it is up to me to be like, yeah, I don't find that person interesting. Or like, you know what? That's true. Oh. But I find the more head you have in a room, it's kind of like, difficult but if you have one or two people you're running it by it's like okay sink or swim with this like we're, we're in it together sink or swim <laughs> yeah well and you get it too it's like you want to run it by people you trust but at the end of the day like yours is the voice of reason again and that's yeah. what i think is super important too like i will never let anyone steer me in a direction where i'm like mm, no it doesn't feel right but i love having a couple of opinions um like that's even like, I think about like love songs, like the album artwork, I had like five different options and my family was like, oh, I like this one. My brother liked this one. My sister liked this one. And I was like, you know what? No, this was like, <laughs> this is the first year that I started saying like no to things too, which is weird. I'm a, very much a yes person and a people pleaser. Um, I like to think it's a nice Canadian in me, but um, no, this year I am doing a lot more of like, trying to spend less time stressing about stuff and just trusting my first instinct. We'll see well, how I'm that goes. That, I, I'm yeah. glad that you still have some yeses in you because it'd be kind of weird <laughs> if it's like, it's like we want Allie as a conversation because we didn't have a conversation with her for a while, but like she's in the no stage of her life. I would just be like, okay, let me know when she's back into the yes stage. So like yeah. anything we run by her, she just goes yes with. It's like, um, we want to invite Allie to a pool party and she performs and they'd be like, that sounds kind of dangerous, but she's in the yes right. stage of her life. So yes. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'd be like, I don't think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, a little bit of the fun aspect here. Cause I, I know we did the conversation side and I like to have a fun aspect. You, you've probably partake or partake, partook, whatever the word is for this stuff. But like, um, we like to have a fun game of like random questions. Uh, Perfect. I, I, I want to ask you before we get into like, the randomness of it because people are going to be like that, that question's staged, but at least I can say that, Hey, I'm admitting it's staged, but okay. when you have someone walk up to you and say, Hey, don't play this song. I don't like it. It reminds me of someone else. Is there anything on your playlist that if someone was playing it, that you'd be like, Holy fuck, turn that off. It reminds me of my ex or this reminds me of a bad time in my life. <laughs> 
I've been really lucky to like escape pretty, pretty clear. Um, like even the songs that I like to say I hate, like for instance, like Eli Young bands always love songs. I will still listen to it. I'm still a yeah. sucker. There's a part of me in the depths of my, my big, big heart that it just like refuses to like be upset at things, but also loves being upset at things. I don't know. I don't know. Um, so that song, um, if anything, maybe like some like 2010, like weird, like dance mix songs. Like I'm trying to think of like some house parties that I've been to okay. and like those kinds of things. Um, probably some like, what was it? Like Cobra Starship or whatever. Um, yes. Either way. Yeah. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure there's for sure. <laughs> oh, there's there's definitely songs like that you bring up Cobra Starship or like other ones that I know and it will bring me back to a certain period of time. Like mm -hmm. I don't know this band by heart, but I was I was so tempted to put it on my Instagram story where I think the song is called Broken Hearted. And it's like okay. Don't Leave Me Broken Hearted Tonight. Like I, I think I have it on my phone, but like I remember it was such a good popular song during mm -hmm. my university days. And I, I think I can go through a breakup. It's just that I thought it was a great song. And then over yeah. time, when you go through one, you're like, okay, this song wasn't even in the relevance when this relationship happened. But then you're like, yeah. now I can't really listen to certain songs. Like, listen, Isn't it weird? Taylor, yeah, like Taylor Swift's like Back to December. Like I know what it's about. But even when I knew what it was about during that time frame, like it doesn't relate to me. I can listen to you, Taylor. And then now, years later, I'm just still like, okay, don't play Back to December. Like, well, has someone hurt your feelings? I'm like, not, yeah. not, I don't remember them doing it but it just hurts <laughs> it's so weird too what music does because like i don't know if you've watched the new kelsey ballerini like short film that she did with the songs but i okay. took the time the other day and i was like i'm gonna sit down with this not expecting much out of it but i was like oh this hurts i have yeah. not experienced i've not experienced getting married a divorce like any of these things but i hurt just as much from what she wrote about in a lot of these songs and i was like huh amazing the power of music yeah, it's like, you know what? The only one that I can think of of Kelsey Ballerini's that like kind of struck struck me. And it's like, again, there's an audience out there that will laugh at this, but it's like Homecoming Queen. I'm just like, mm -hmm. I'm not a Homecoming Queen. I know I'm not a Homecoming Queen. But like, right. I can imagine someone in my high school that like, and maybe they had a great life. Like, this is the stuff that you imagine because of maybe like the few encounters you have with them. And I'm like, you know what? Maybe that's a song for them. And then you go and ask them like, do you like this song? And they'd be like, love it and you're like hmm like i wonder why you love it but then you don't really want to bring up like do you love it because it relates to you like they might be like no i just like kelsey ballerina i'm like all right i'm the idiot here <laughs> like yeah. i thought i was gonna go deeper <laughs> but yeah but it's i mean so there are songs, yeah but there, there are songs out there that i feel like you know will pump you up or put you in a good mood do you have mm -hmm. any of those on your like playlist that you're like oh man like when this song comes on i feel like i can conquer the world i mean Shania Twain, man, I feel like a woman. Like, how can you not? Um, like, it's it's probably like a bunch of like just some weird like older country stuff. I feel like that's a bunch on my playlist. Taylor Swift, how can you not with like pretty much any Taylor Swift anthem? Um, I don't know if you remember Sean Desmond, but I feel like I any like, old yeah. Sean Desmond song will do just that for me. There's there's some there's some good songs out there for sure. It's funny, like, just because you brought it up, but I remember at, like, uh, in junior high when they had dances, Sean Desmond, like, yeah. Get Ready would come on, and then you'd have uh -huh. your own dancers to that, and I'm glad no one has tapes on that. Like, for the for the generation that we have the video tapes, I'm just glad that at, at any preschool or whatever, junior high dance, they're like, yeah, we're going to tape you guys. I'm just like, okay, cool. But, like, there's never, never Brian. Brian is never on them. And I'm like, you saved yourself. <laughs> I would be mortified if we had TikTok like back then. Yeah. Oh my God. Like my life would be over. So to start a bit of the random questions here, uh, one of the first ones they have here, cause it's, it's just a generator, but um, what is something that you were very afraid of? Spiders. Spiders. Like if there's, you, there's you would never go see Spider-Man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. If there's a spider in a room, like I'm the first one to yell and call for someone to like kill it for me or, or, or just move it. Yeah. yeah Spiders. Just move it away. All right. Yeah. Um, what is the most embarrassing moment that you can think of? 
Oh God. Um, if we, again, going through old, like VCR footage, like old videotapes <laughs> that my parents have, there's probably a lot in there. Um, there's this video. Um, my ears always like changing altitudes would like get, you know, clogged very quickly. So there's this video in the gondola in Banff. I must've been like seven and my sister just like pulls it up when I'm home and cackles. Cause it's like me with my ears closed going like, <sighs> like I want my ears and like, not that that's the most embarrassing thing ever, but for some reason, when someone pulls out a video of you and is like, ha ha ha, this is the funniest thing ever. It feels very embarrassing. So that's, that's one of them, at least one it of does, many. It does. It doesn't feel like they're saying, here's a video of like you and your most successful and we're going to praise that's you. Totally it's not. like, it's, I feel like those are the three words, like even to this day where someone's like, I have a video and you're like, uh Oh, cause it's not like I have a video of you doing something so great. We're going to talk about it. It's like, I have a video and we're going to react to just how embarrassing this should be. Like, fun. even if it's, even if it's not like, I'm sure for like the fun, the fun of it, because it's all perception is someone would be like, I found a video of your podcast. Like, yeah, I'm the one who posted them. But in my mind, I'm like, Oh God, why did I forget to edit out? <laughs> Totally. Like nothing yeah. they just they just want to show you a clip where they think you totally effed up i'd be like yeah i left that in because i thought it was funny but now that yeah. you're all laughing at it and it doesn't sound like you're laughing with me i'm Sucks. going home and editing that <laughs> what's your favorite yeah. go-to outfit to have on like something that you just uh, like even if you're just out in public you're just like i'm putting this together and i think it I think it works it's so cheesy because i mean it sounds cheesy but like honestly denim on denim a canadian tuxedo if I can't decide on anything, I am like, that is a solid go-to. I you cannot go wrong with a pair of jeans and a denim jacket. It always wins. <laughs> I feel like mine, and again, it depends on the climate. Like I'm in Newfoundland, but if I'm like in Ottawa in the summer, I know it's warm. Yeah. I'm now very like short sky or like a short sh sleeve, but I think I'll just put on like, um, it's like Nike black pants. They're like, they're not like slack pants, but they're yeah. just like exercise pants. And then just like a light hoodie, like the lightest of hoodies. Where it's yeah. like, it feels like a shirt. And then someone's like, really? I'm just still like, just wait till like it's like nighttime out where it's not sunny. And I'm like, this outfit works. Right. You're prepared for everything. Yeah. Yeah. And, and like here in Newfoundland, I'm in my own room and I'm wearing a sweater because I want it to be cold. And right. someone will come down and be like, man, it's like an igloo down here. I'm like, you're welcome. Like, yeah. <laughs> like it's already cold out. I'm like, yeah, but if you go upstairs and take a left, we have like a fireplace and you sit right. by there for five minutes and you are like, in florida no. florida so you're like yeah. no yeah so <laughs> I, I i keep it cold why was the first album you remember like either downloading or owning i feel like by saying downloading i'm just i'm pitching it to a younger generation because if i say which the one like what's the first cd you ever right. have there's gonna be like well, yeah <laughs> i was gonna think about it like that takes me back to like the downloading like limewire days um yes. and yes. i was trying to think what would have been on there i know like one of the first cds i ever got um was the britney spears hit me baby one more time like single cd um okay. i remember also getting the sabrina the teenage witch compilation cassette tape that was my first cassette um but first download ooh, i mean like it probably was probably was some like schneier or something along the lines of that it was either that well, or see, like probably boys you're like what you're the oldest sibling right like in your family yeah yeah. Yeah. So therefore, like, yeah, you would remember. Like, mine was just kind of like I wouldn't have a first download as much as it is. Like, my brother probably liked the same song as me, and right. I was like, okay, cool. Like, you know, Smash Mouth's All Star. I'm just like, I'm gonna download that. It's like, it's already there. I'm just like, thank you. But I, I feel a, like the first, the, the first one I can kind of remember for myself that like, and I don't know if it's necessarily the first, but one that I'm definitely like, I know I had to download it. And it's kind of the irony of it is it was like don't say you love me but it was by it was for like the pokemon movie like by m2m right yeah yeah and i was just still like I, I i'm just i'm just glad that people like can't find my history for that because they'd be like hold on how old were you and i'm just like relax i was nine and it was a cool movie and the song was killer it was always on ytv's hit list so leave me I alone i totally <laughs> forgot that that was in the pokemon movie yeah it was wild like, okay back memories now yeah like for a nine-year-old watching pokemon and you're a guy you don't really you're not really cons you're considered on pokemon but i just remember that video stuck with me and like even when i look back at it today i'm like man imagine if we had these days now because they're out like in a movie theater like outside they're on cars and 
I, it's funny because we bring it up to like mostly every artist that we've had on or everybody. When you listen to songs mm -hmm. as a kid, you like the beat, you like mm -hmm. the the artist, and that's about it. When you get older, you're kind of like, uh, well, I was a nine year old going around singing "Don't Say You Love Me." It's like, totally. It's like you don't yeah, even know absolutely. me. Don't say you love me. I'm like that makes sense. You don't know me. Don't say you love me. But then when you're older, you're like, ah understood has deeper meaning it's don't say you love me because you want to get me in the bed blah 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 blah, or whatever way you want to take it but i'm just like as a nine-year-old you're like i i just liked it because it was in a movie man it's so crazy and it's so funny because like listening to music now like i feel like everyone's like oh my gosh they said this i i can't even think of the last song that people were complaining about but they're like i can't believe they said this in a country song and i'm like there's been a lot worse things like years before this like we just kind of yeah. forget like, yeah well, I think it's interesting, like from a standpoint of like some sometimes when you see on Instagram, like because I you wouldn't see it back in the day, but like someone will say the song is releasing this week or the song is releasing in a few months time. And like you're like, OK, cool. But then once the song is released, they'll start showing you like how far back it went. Like I think yeah. the, the one that I most recent the, off the top of my head that I thought was kind of interesting was I think it's like Taylor Acorn has a song out of um, like she's kind of a pop singer or a pop punk singer. I love and, like, she Taylor. Released yeah, like she released it around Valentine's Day. And I was like, good yeah. marketing, because it is like for, but then she showed a clip of how far back that went. And there's two sides of that. And you can kind of answer this question because, you know, you're in this realm. But like, as an mm -hmm. artist, how, like waiting a whole goddamn year when that's probably like, you like instantly it's on your mind where it's like, love it, let's do it, let's release it. And someone's like, hold on a second. Let's, uh, let's let it build a little bit. Let's, uh, let's give people some teaser clips and see how it does. But like, you as the artist how do you respond to that are you kind of like shut up <laughs> we're doing it now yeah i mean like the sad part is that like the excitement that you get when you initially write a song not that it fizzles but like there's such a like cool excitement to begin with and then you're like okay well it could take the next like two to three months to record the song and then you've got to have it mixed you've got to have it mastered you've got to get the artwork done now like in order to put it to like streaming you need to have it to them like four to eight weeks minimum yeah. in advance before it comes out especially if you want to pre-sale on it and it's like all of this timeline stuff and that's why i'm saying like i'm really excited about this year like having a plan for stuff coming out because that means we're already ahead of the game and like we already have the next song uploaded and ready to go but like again coming back to tiktok where it's like people are like oh if you wrote a song tomorrow that you love you should post about it tomorrow I'm like, I don't, I don't want to do that because you get people excited about something. And if they can't have it immediately, it ruins the fun for them. It ruins the fun for you. Like you kind of kill a song in my brain, you know, like there's something about like even love songs. I started promoing it two weeks before it came out. And I feel like that was a week too soon because, you know, like people immediately when it popped off, they were like, we want it now. And I was like, oh, next Friday. And they were like, no right now today That's, and i was like yeah I, that is i, I am a part of that, that audience <laughs> base <laughs> yeah i've heard i heard it on like when you posted it and i was just like this is catchy i like it but then you know the social media side of me was like let's not comment on it because i've already seen enough and like she's probably sitting there like fuck like just let it breathe guys like come on like i well, there there's a really like there's a good band that um from the uk like picture this and he released and I and sometimes it's like a double-edged sword because he released it where it's like I wrote this song for myself and I heard mm -hmm. it like maybe two minutes after he posted it and I was like oh it's like I wonder when that one's gonna released and then of course he just kind of was like we're working on it and I'm just like no when is it getting released and he's like right we, we are working on it I'm like no I don't think you're hearing me like it's almost like just fucking release yeah. the god like I don't care if it's three seconds you release that shit. <laughs> Well, that's the issue. Like all of these songs that usually get posted online are like a starting like demo phase. And there's still yeah. so much work that goes into building past that, which, you know, the fans don't get. But I think it's really cool because it's also changed the way, obviously, we consume music and that music is also created. So now it's more like, if you like the demo? Well, OK, well, then we'll just like clean that up a little bit and we'll put it out, you know, like um, it's crazy how it's changing the industry, too. But it's fun. It keeps keeps things exciting. That's for sure. I feel like people just want like all the singles, like when singles come out, and it's just like okay. But like I don't know. For me, 
as much as it's like impatiently waiting for stuff, it's like you got to remember there's a time frame that you impatiently waited for a CD album. You still wait for games to be released. Like I, I like games. Like I have the Switch in the back here, but it's like I still wait for like games to be released. And it's like, so how come you can patiently wait for that? But when an artist tells you to wait for another month for a song, you go off right. your goddamn rocker. Where it's just like, no, now yeah. I'm like, you don't go to you don't go to like Super Mario Bros or something. Be like, I know that right. you got this game in March, but like, I I kind of want to play it now. And they'll just be like, well, in yeah. March, and you're just like, okay, understood. But it's like That's easy smart. access, I guess, to artists, right? Yeah. No, absolutely. Right. Yeah, we'll we'll take the uh, we'll take the blunt for it, but that's fine. It is what it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, especially when they're all on like Instagram. Like, I mean, it's I, again going back to the whole age dividing thing. It's like you couldn't totally. reach out to if this was in the '90s. I mean, you wouldn't be able to reach out to you through like an Instagram. Like, you might have had to be like search a little, or you'd be like right. someone that's like one of your closest friends would be like. All right, so five five people have sent me a message and they want me to tell you this, or like it'd be like MySpace where you're like, oh, yeah, <laughs> now it's instantly like you post so a true. video clip and someone's like, it's great. Where's the rest of it? It's like okay, because they're like I can imagine like, and I feel like that's why like an older generation like Garth, Reba, and like maybe even ones that grew up in the '90s, they kind of mm -hmm. have a handle of social media because they don't treat it very like serious because like they're already made. We'll probably have someone holding like having that but just imagine what they used to have to go through because i guess the equivalent of it is you coming home to your house and it's mm -hmm. like hey honey you got like three three thousand uh email or not emails but like mail and it's like you kind of got to reply to these and they're she's just like damn like it's a lot of mail to reply to it's like well they've been waiting like six to eight months to maybe a year for you to come home <laughs> totally yeah yeah we, so. we are really lucky that at least it's easier to do all of our replying now. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah, sometimes it's too easy. Sometimes it's just a, like, so you love this song. We're like, thank you. And then I, I'm the type of person that if someone just writes like, thank you, I'm just like, okay. Like you really put a lot of effort into that one. And, but it's like, right. yeah, but she has like 20 other messages that she has to try to, imp I'm just like, fair enough. You know, the, the coolest part I think about releasing stuff now is knowing that there's like a whole back catalog for people to discover. So that's the one thing I will say True. as much as I'm like, maybe I don't have this song for you like right now, but there's like 30 other songs that maybe yeah. you'll like one of those that that'll like hold you over for, for a quick minute. So um, well, yeah, I, I, like, I, I like that you clued it up with that. Cause I, I forgot to bring this up in the beginning, but you reminded me is like, when you talk about a back catalog, there was someone when like some of my friends will ask, who you having on this week, who you have. And then I will tell them, because I'm trying to help the act as well. I'll be like, yeah. this is who we have on. Go check out their music. Go check. And sometimes, like, I don't know. I'm not down their throat saying, like, you have to do this. But someone right. came actually to me the other day, and they said your name completely wrong. They were like, they they like said, like, Ali. I was like, I was like no, it's just Ali. And then they're like, I really mm -hmm. like the song Moonshine. And I was like, funny enough. I was like, we did talk about Moonshine in, like, two years ago. But you're right, yeah. with a back catalog, they can now like go like, hey, listen, this one didn't do it for me. Moonshine did. Or, hey, yeah. I like this one. But I, I wonder how an artist sometimes, because you you took that in stride, but I feel like some artists would be like, man, like what my recent stuff isn't good enough for you. I'm just like, relax. People go, there are people on YouTube right now that are watching my Emma Watkins video that's been yeah. done like two years ago. And I'll still get uh -huh. comments where it's like, good conversation it, it just plays in my mind where it's like so my latest ones aren't good conversations i'm a little bit confused <laughs> yeah no, it's wild but but it's nice to know that like again being a creative like i hope that there are people that don't like half of my songs because that means that i'm actually making something that there's like a specific group of people <laughs> that love um and at some point everyone might find something that i will never forget there was this is oh gosh maybe two years ago, I think when Guys Like You was about to come out. Um, is that two years ago? Yeah, I think so. Anyhow, um, yeah, so. Yeah, a right video that like, I'm not going to say viral, but like we were getting like 50,000 views and this was in a point where I was getting like nothing. But it ended up in this group of like anime, like, but like, like dark anime, <laughs> like, loving people like all of like you'd look at the profile pictures and you were like oh no what's happening but it started yeah. going viral with these people because they all kept commenting being like i don't like this this isn't for me and i'm like 
Yeah, but if you didn't comment, then it wouldn't keep sending it to people who also have the same interest as you because the algorithm is like, oh yeah, they're commenting, they love it. They're sharing it, they love it. And I'm like, no, 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 no. This went bad so quick. Yeah. But yeah. the one thing was, is I would respond to them and I was like, if you don't like this one, maybe you'll like something else. And I actually grew some fans out of that one. Who would have thought we'd come back and save the day? But um, yeah, never, uh, never get too upset over yourself when people don't like your stuff. That's what I've learned. It's, it's yeah. going to happen. And uh, it means you're going to find people that love it one day, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. I feel like that's a tattoo somewhere that someone should get. Where it's like, it's like, if someone doesn't like you, just love yourself. And then it's like, you know, it's like, all right, here, read it. I, I, I you know what? I want to close it with that one. Do you, do you think if you, well, I don't know if you have any tattoos, but if, if you don't, okay. What would be a tattoo that would you, you'd like to have? Like, cause I know, I'm not a tattoo person, but I'll give you mine first. I feel okay. like I'm a big fan of Conan and Conan's late night speech where it was like, I, I can't remember. I used to remember it word for word, but it was almost like, listen, if there's anything you want to do in life, you can do it. Like you just like, nothing is impossible, blah, blah. Now it's a big, long saying. And I know there's like yeah. people that have it on a shirt. I think I just get a tattoo that says like, you know, uh, Conan late or tonight show speech. And they'd be like, what the, what? And I'd be like, go, go Google that. And then you'd, you'd get time. it. Yeah. yeah. I love that. Oh, oh that's, yeah. see, that's really cool and thought out. Unlike mine. So I'll start <laughs> off by saying, um, I am scared of needles. Um, that should have been what I'm scared of. I'm scared of needles. Like, I can take out a spider, a needle. Oh my God. No, <laughs> a needle? no, like I would literally stay home from school on days where we had to get like vaccines done. And then my mom would have to take me to the doctor like weeks later to get it anyhow. Um, it's a little, like a little, like diamond. Okay. My dog Jewel is my light and joy. And I swear to God, the day that we lose her will be the last day of my life. Um, but she's just like the most incredible thing. And I just like want to get a little, like little outline of a diamond somewhere so that I always have Jewel with me, even when she's no longer here, where, but we're not going to start. Where, yeah. Where, where would you put it? I don't know. I, that's the next issue is I like, if I get temporary tattoos it will be on for like three minutes and I'm like, I hate this spot and like get it off of me and I will rub it off. So yeah. I don't know. I feel like I might get like some temporary ones done and like tested a bunch of different spots and see what goes over well, you know? <laughs> Cause it's always like you, when you get a tattoo, you know, you gotta have it like permanent, but it's almost like if you're going to sit in the chair, you don't want it to be in like the roughest area. So like, I see people have it like on their hips and I'm just still like, why like i get i get like you know it's not their first one obviously but it's no. still like okay but like i think if i got one i'm like okay find something that's very fleshy and then that way when you dig in i don't know and then they're like all right well the, the only fleshy part is like your fuck your stomach or something i'd be like you know what i'm yeah. good i don't i don't want it there so just whatever yeah. they're like well the next best area and then they do it like on your like up here or something i'm like it's not as bad yeah. but with me i'd still be like man my friend said he, he got one and he like put it on because he was in like the military or like army and he got one on the back here. And I was like, uh -huh. that's kind of a stupid place to put it. He's like, no, like I can see it in the mirror. I don't have to look at it all the time. I'm like, but I'd forget it. And I'd forget what I got after like two years. I'd be like, someone's like, you got something on your back that says like Buster because it'd be my dog that passed away. And I'd be like, mm -hmm. what, what, what? Oh, and like trying to shake it off or something. They'd be like, I'd be like, oh, right, I got that tattoo when I was like 20. Okay. <laughs> Forgot about it. That's um, cool, though. I don't like that. That's going to do it for this episode of Tobin Tonight. Our thanks to Allie for coming on to the show. Remember, you can find past, present, and future episodes on TobinTonight.com, Spotify, and iTunes. Follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and leave a comment or two. For Tobin and myself, this is Jacob saying thank you for listening and good night. <laughs>